The SNMMI 2023 Annual Meeting is recognized as the premier educational, scientific, research, and networking event in nuclear medicine and molecular imaging. This year, we're in beautiful Chicago, where the four-day event will provide physicians, technologists, pharmacists, laboratory professionals, and scientists with an in-depth view of the latest research and development in the field, as well as providing insights into practical applications for the clinic. SNMMI TV starts right now. Hello and welcome to SNMMI TV. My name is Dina Baer, and I'm here to share all the latest at this year's SNMMI annual meeting. Stay tuned, as we'll be having one-on-one -on -one conversations with leaders in the field, highlighting organizations that are at the forefront of nuclear medicine and molecular imaging. But first, we want to hear from you, the attendees, about what steps your institution or practices have taken to respond to the growth in radiopharmaceutical therapies. Let's take a look at what you had to say. So at the University of Utah, we're working on developing the production methods of new radioactive nuclide, terbium-161, um, which can be used for beta and OJ therapy. And we're also working on the development of radionuclide generator systems for alpha emitters, so kind of um, dealing with the production availability of some of these isotopes. It's definitely a growing field, uh, especially if you combine therapeutics with uh, imaging uh, to make a diagnostics. Yeah. My lab is focusing on the development of imaging probes uh, for the imaging part. But there's a lot of potential collaboration with the therapeutic field. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's an exciting opportunity. Um, we would like to do a lot, and I hope we delve into it a lot further. At the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, we're actually establishing, or trying to establish, a radiochemistry center of excellence. I'm actually the first radiochemistry hire um, in this, in this um, Field, and we have three new open positions. So we are certainly trying to establish radiochemistry, not only in research, but also through education. So I've developed um, two new classes to help um, educate the new young minds and to expand the field because although there's also a radionuclide shortage, there's certainly a radiochemist sh shortage. And we, uh, we definitely need more scientists going into this field. Immunotherapy has emerged as a promising alternative in the arsenal against cancer by harnessing the power of the immune system to specifically target malignant tissues. As the field of immunotherapy continues to expand, researchers will require newer methods for studying the interactions between the immune system, tumor cells, and immunotherapy agents. Let's see what Dr. Farwell from the University of Pennsylvania has to say about this. So I think there's a number of trends in molecular imaging for immunotherapy response. And actually imaging the immune system is something that's relatively new to the nuclear medicine community. Up until recently, we didn't really have any tools that were specific for immune cells. So one of the first probes was a CD8 probe to image CD8 positive T cells. Uh, and that's in a phase two clinical trial. And so some of the participants heard about that today and I think there's a lot of excitement about it. Uh, but what we learned more is that there's even more immune-specific tracers that are being developed, a variety of other immune markers, uh, CD4, um, and as well there's excitement about imaging immune activation. So start starting to think about not just are the immune cells present, but uh, what are they doing? Are they activated and are they actively killing tumor cells? Um, and we heard a great overview of, of all the different approaches that are being developed in um, molecular imaging to, to image immune activation. And I think there's a lot of excitement about that. I think the attendees will hopefully come away with a few different nuggets of information. I think, obviously one is just the enthusiasm for imaging in the setting of immunotherapy and some of the um, philosophical approaches as to why, why we would want to image early. Uh, I think as an imaging community, we often assume that of course we would want to image early uh, but I think on the receiving end, on the oncology side, it's not always um, as obvious. 
And so I think we stepped through some nice approaches for why one would want to image early, which would include being able to guide clinical management, understand the mechanism of response, uh, and, um, and potentially even use these tools in the setting of new immunotherapies. And so I think the hope is that some of these are going to become available in the clinical space very soon. So hopefully the attendings will, will learn a bit from all of, all of that. During our time here, we're going to be taking you on a tour of organizations and institutes that are at the forefront of nuclear medicine and molecular imaging. Let's begin with Actinium Pharmaceuticals, a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company committed to staying at the forefront of innovation, collaborating with leading global biopharmaceutical companies like Astellas, using its targeted radiotherapies as part of the regimen for cell and gene therapies. At Actinium, we deploy our proprietary technology platform to develop targeted radiotherapies directed against cancer patient populations where these patients currently do not have any therapies that work. IOMAP B phase three results have shown that we can take relapsed refractory AML patients who are currently not transplantable and transplant them very efficaciously and the results have shown improved survival. The Sierra trial showed the patients who went on to get apamistamab had a durable complete remission rate, which was the primary endpoint, of 22%. The ones who were randomized to the conventional care arm had a durable complete remission rate of 0%. And when we compare one-year survival rates for patients who got apamistamab, it was more than 30% versus less than 15% for those that got conventional care. An exciting and encouraging new way to treat various cancers and rare diseases is currently in the pipeline at Telix Pharmaceuticals. Let's see how the Elucix difference is bringing new hope and promise to prostate cancer patients. The global mission of Telix is that nuclear medicines really come of age and these technologies need to be available to patients everywhere. Elucix is a product that has come to market in the last year that has really changed the way both radiologists and urologists manage their urological prostate cancer patients. One nice thing about companies such as Telix that have both diagnostics as well as therapeutics uh, in the pipeline, um, we could really take advantage of theragnostics with imaging agents as well as therapeutics around the same target whether that is for prostate cancer, kidney cancer, gliomas, or other. Well, I think we need to move away from treating cancer as a lump and moving to treating cancer as a, as a well-understood and well-characterized biology. And that's what Theranostics really do. They allow you to explore and understand the extent of the disease and then tailor the therapeutic options precisely to that individual patient. I have the great pleasure of being joined now by Dr. Helen Nadell, who is the incoming SNMMI president. I have to say congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. But I know you have a Herculean effort ahead. <laughs> I do. So tell me a little bit about your vision. My vision is to make sure that people know that nuclear medicine is a safe, effective, precise tool for imaging, diagnosis, and therapy and can be used for adults and children and that it can both prolong life and improve quality of life. What do you think some of the challenges have been getting that message out? I think the word nuclear is a, 
is a hard sell a little bit. Um, medicine people know about, but when you add the word nuclear, and yet it is safe. We use very small amounts of radioactive drugs, both to diagnose, and then when we need to treat, we use the right amount to provide effective therapy that maybe will pr improve quality and quantity of life. And that, I think, is the key, is talking about the possibilities of nuclear totally. medicine. Tell me about that. So the possibilities now have just expanded in the last few years with uh, the approval of new drugs for treatment of prostate cancer, for the approval and potential new coming approval for drugs that can d assess whether treatment for Alzheimer's disease is working. And we are positioned right in the middle of providing information that will be important to the managing physician and to the patient. We have our eyes on the patient. All right, you say you've got your eye on the patient. That is, of course, the theme of the meeting. What does that really mean? That means that everything we do in nuclear medicine is to improve patient care, prolong life and prolong quality of life. And so that means that uh, all of our constituent members of our society who include physicians, technologists, scientists, uh, industry, allied health professionals, they can learn about uh, topics in their field and they can also uh, look farther afield and look to what they're interested in, what the possibilities are in nuclear medicine. And the eye on the patient means that we also direct our attention specifically to the patient. At our meetings, we've had for many years a patient education day, which will occur on Sunday. And we will have patients come and talk about how nuclear medicine has helped them and how uh, it has uh, changed their lives. So. There are many ways that we have our eye on the patient, both here and for the future. How can attendees here help? What message would you give to them? They have a multitude of things they can learn from this meeting, both here at the meeting, and they can take it home with them because you have access to this information for many months after the meeting. And our website has a lot of information that they can access uh, right now. We are going to redesign our website and make it a little more friendly, but that's not quite ready. We're not ready for prime time right now, but our website is comprehensive right now. And people at the Nuclear Medicine Society offices are always willing to help and leadership and all committee chairs and technologists, everybody's willing to help. So call me. And being here is also very helpful. Find I think me. all coming together. Congratulations again. Thank you. Dr. David Mankoff is here now talking about molecular imaging science and breast cancer. And I think that this connection is so important. Tell us a little bit about your talk. So my talk is all about um, using molecular imaging, and especially PET, uh, to help drive precision oncology for breast cancer patients. And in particular, there's so many therapies now, you really need more and more tools to decide what are the right therapies and whether or not they're working. And I, I just think this is, the, this is the time where molecular imaging shines. And so my talk will be all about not, not necessarily how you find breast cancer or stage it, but how do you help treat it? How to help guide the treatment? And I think on a patient level, so many people feel like, it is so treatable now, we are finding it. But the fact that it's getting better and better in terms of finding and treatment is really incredible. We can't stop, in other words. I agree, and in addition to finding it, which I think nuclear medicine is a very important part of it, nuclear medicine does something that other modalities can't. It not only finds that it can tell us what it's made of, you know. I think we've learned for a while that breast cancer is not just one disease, it's actually a, a number of closely related diseases that have different characteristics. And, and, and molecular imaging is probably right now the only way we can characterize the full burden of disease. You know, so patients with metastatic breast cancer, this is a really key modality for them um, and guiding their treatment. And how does that open the door for precision medicine? We've been talking so much about that over the last several years. Yeah, so, so just to go back to definitions, precision medicine means rather than saying, okay, I think I'm going to give you uh, Agent X, is to actually um, uh, understand you and the tumor um, uh, that you have, a patient and, and, and her tumor, 
um, and to use those characteristics to design the right choice of therapy. Right now, that has been largely based upon tissue sampling, but especially in more advanced disease, there's a burden of disease that is impossible to sample and may actually be quite heterogeneous from side, site to site. So molecular imaging is a tool that in the era of precision medicine can precisely identify the targets and the degree to which they have heterogeneous expression. That makes all the difference in the world. I feel like that's in line with sort of the theme of this meeting that I know you're a big proponent of, and that is keeping a vigilant eye on the patient. Yeah, and so some of what people think of as a vigilant eye on the patient is to make sure the disease doesn't come back. But in somebody with metastatic breast cancer that may be living uh, with that for the rest of her life, we're keeping an eye on the patient and an eye on her treatment, right? It used to be you have one shot for treatment. If it doesn't work, there's nothing else left. These days, there's a plethora of treatments. And if molecular imaging can help match the right treatment to the right patient, that's what we're all about. So we're keeping an eye on the patient. We're actually kind of keeping an eye on our oncologist as well. So when people hear this talk, what do you want them to walk out and do and say? Um, uh, there are a couple of themes. One is, I think breast cancer among solid tumors may be the tumor that has the most possible choices um, for therapy. I want them to walk away and say, boy, molecular imaging is an absolutely essential tool for figuring out how to treat patients with, with metastatic breast cancer, and we're just getting started, right? We're at the dawn of the era of using these techniques, not just to find cancers, but to tell us how to treat them. Well, Dr. Mankoff, thank you for all you are doing. Looking forward to your talk. My pleasure. I'm excited about it. Well, that's it for episode one of SNMMI TV. We'll be back again tomorrow with more exclusive material at this year's SNMMI annual meeting. But don't forget, you can catch our show on the televisions throughout the convention center, in your hotel room at the Palmer House Hilton and the Marriott Marquis. We'll see you tomorrow.